Hey everybody, what's up? My name is Matt and welcome to Downshift. Today I'm bringing you the first comparison from the channel. We are going to be looking at the world of small SUVs. In the world of small SUVs, you have many good choices, but we're going to be looking at style versus storage. For full details on both of these vehicles, please browse my channel. I've got in-depth reviews on both the Volkswagen Tiguan and the Mazda CX-5. Um, but for the sake of this comparison video, we're going to be looking at seven key factors that people shopping in this segment care about. Exterior styling, interior design, quality, cargo space, technology, driving dynamics, and most of all, value. So let's jump into the VW and get started. Hey guys, so we are behind the wheel of the Volkswagen Tiguan. Uh, before we jump into things too in depth, I want to take a minute to thank my friends over at Hall Volkswagen Mazda in Brookfield, Wisconsin for making all these videos possible. They've made not only this comparison video, but also the full review of the CX-5, the full review of the Tiguan, a full review of a 2019 Jetta, and a full review of the Volkswagen GTI possible. So again, great thanks to them. They've been fantastic to work with and they will take fantastic care of you. Um, another thing I want to address right away is you'll notice that I'm not driving during this um, during this video and that's because you know I want to be sure that I'm being safe. We all love cars, we love to drive, but we want to make sure that we're being safe and I don't want to be trying to spout off a bunch of facts and be distracted while I'm on the road. So with that, let's jump into exterior styling. So with the exterior styling of this Tiguan, it's really grown in size significantly and it looks to be much more substantial than the previous generation. I personally love the classic boxy classic SUV look to this Tiguan. Um, it gives it a sense of muscularity, uh, ruggedness, and the ability to kind of, you feel like you can take it off road, it's more capable uh, and things like that. So it just looks tougher than other vehicles in this segment. So for all those reasons, I will give the VW Tiguan a six for exterior styling. Let's move on to the interior design. Now, the best way to describe the interior of this Tiguan and a lot of the Volkswagens that we're seeing these days, uh, it can be summed up in mostly two words, sanit or sterile and unoffensive. Um, so it's a clean design, it's very subtle. Uh, I don't know if that's what they were going for, but it doesn't call attention to itself. It does have some nice touches. I do like the flat bottom steering wheel. Um, I always love, I've loved all these new Volkswagen steering wheels. I think they just look fantastic. They're very ergonomic, they feel great. Um, but as far as the rest of the interior, it's very nice, it's very organized, it's very German, it's very prim and proper and, and done up, um, but it's nothing you know, overly special. It's nothing that you're just gonna turn heads. And So for these reasons, I will have to give it a three, regrettably. Now let's go on to space and interior and cargo volume. Um, this is one of the biggest changes that the Tiguan has seen for this generation. VW has extended the wheelbase on this by seven and a half inches and the entire length of the vehicle by 11 inches. They also widened it by about three inches. So this thing is much, much, much bigger than the previous generation. This all translates into a near segment leading cargo capacity of about 73 and a half uh, cubic feet of space with all the seats down. So that is fantastic. Um, additionally, I have plenty of room in the back seat. Um, the back seats, when the, th the third row is equipped, uh, the back seats are uh, adjustable. You can slide them forward and backwards. You can recline. Uh, it's great. There's not great legroom in the third row, but granted this is a is still a compact SUV, so putting a third row in it is really just for small children. Now in contrast, the Mazda CX-5 only gives you about 60 cubic feet of cargo space, so this is quite a bit bigger. Um, the cargo space and the increased um, kind of rear seat legroom and practicality is going to be the reason that I give this car an eight out of 10 in terms of interior space and cargo. Let's talk about quality. Now quality is, when I say quality, what I refer to is uh, build materials and reliability. Now, um, I will concede that the, the interior of this is very vanilla. Um, you know, it's nothing super over the top, it's, but it's clean, it's nice, it's laid out. But the thing that you're gonna get out of this is fantastic build materials. And this is what the Germans do especially well. Um, they bring you the soft touch dash, the leather, the stitching, the aluminum accenting in all the right places when it's not completely overdone. Um, if I'm honest, I would like to see a little bit of wood here or there, but in the model that I previously drove, it had a massive panoramic sunroof. It is fantastic. Um, you're not gonna find any of the cheap kind of Chevy scratchy plastics in here. Um, and the ergonomics and the controlling of the infotainment system, which is all new, um, is very intuitive and convenient. And for those reasons, I give this a seven out of 10 in terms of quality. 
Now I want to talk to you about technology. Technology in this vehicle is fantastic, especially on the top SEL trims. You're going to get a massive 12-point inch, 12.3-inch uh, infotainment screen um, in the front here. Um, if you have the VW Digital Cockpit equipped, which I highly recommend, uh, you'll get another 12.3-inch full digital gauge cluster that's fully customizable up to three people. Um, but as far as the infotainment screen goes, you'll get this in pretty much all trim levels, SE, uh, SEL. Um, not sure what you get in the S, to be completely honest, but it's still a nice screen. Um, it's extremely intuitive, it's responsive, and it's robust. Uh, it also features Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which the CX-5 does not. Um, <clears throat> and also, I want to make sure that I mention the safety suite on this vehicle. The safety suite on this Tiguan is unlike anything I've ever seen. There's like 10 things that keep you from getting into a crash. You don't have just lane keep assist. You don't have just adaptive cruise with full stop. You have like forward collision mitigation. You have blind spot monitoring, cross traffic alert, you know, 12 other things. It's insane. It's so robust and it's, you know, it's fantastic. So for all those reasons, I really do believe that it is fair to give this car a nine out of 10 um, in terms of technology. Now, driving dynamics, this is really the part where I'd love to show you uh, me whipping around a little bit driving, but you know, in terms of being safe, spotting all these facts and talking to you through these things, um, I will, I will, I guess, kind of urge you to look at the full review of the Tiguan that I have on my channel uh, if you want to see me driving the car around and it rolling around on the road and, and get some B-roll shots of that. But uh, in terms of driving mode, or driving <laughs> dynamics. The Tiguan has a sport mode. I'm not really sure why. Um, <clears throat> it, it does have turbos, um, but I do feel the throttle response is a little laggy. Uh, it's a little sharper when you turn sport mode on, but you definitely still notice a little bit of turbo lag. This is Volkswagen's two liter turbo that they do oh so well in other applications. Uh, it is mated to the Tiptronic transmission rather than a DSG that you would get in something like a GTI. However, that is a sports car. This is a family SUV, so it makes sense. Uh, you shouldn't need to drive super fast, although I would love to see the transmission sharpened up a little bit more and a little bit more power. Um, <clears throat> to the wheels uh, when you turn sport mode on. Now, with that being said, this car makes about 180 some uh, horsepower with about 220 pound-feet of torque. Those are decent numbers. Um, this, this engine is tuned more for torque than horsepower, um, and that is because this car is massive. We're talking about how much it's grown. Uh, it is now um, you know, so much bigger and that means more weight. It's 4,000 pounds uh, and that really shows uh, when you try to throw it around and, and you really do feel that when you drive. Also steering is light and precise but is not doesn't spur the most engagement uh, so for those reasons I feel that I can give this car a 5 out of 10. It's very average, uh, nothing super sporty but definitely not something super closed off from the world and unengaging and uninspiring. Now the last thing I want to talk about is value. Now this can be perceived differently depending on who you're talking to and what's important to them, um, but one thing that is a fact is the Tiguan is a little bit more expensive than other offerings in this segment. However, um, you can get a base S model with near segment leading interior capacity and cargo, a standard third row, a turbocharged engine, all for just over $25,000. You can get it for about $25,345 I believe. Um, it doesn't give you all wheel drive, but you can option it up uh, for 1300 extra dollars. Um, and to be completely honest, you know, there are very few times where you really need four wheel drive. So you can save money on that if you so choose, which will give you a standard third row. However, the way that I would order my Tiguan is of course fully decked out uh, because we're dreaming, right? Um, so I would have a fully loaded SEL. I would order mine with the digital cockpit because I just think that that is still one of the coolest things that I've seen in the industry. It's so you know, immersive, everything is right there in front of you. You don't need to look down to your infotainment screen. It's all right here in your cluster. Uh, I love it, that's how I would order it. But a fully decked out SEL with uh, the digital cockpit is going to be $36,000, um, which is creeping up towards, is creeping up dangerously close to the luxury segment money. Uh, I think you can get into an Alfa Romeo Stelvio for about 42 grand, same, same kind of ballpark uh, for a BMW X3. So you really have to be careful with the price tag, um, but you really are getting so much more for your money with this car in terms of technology and space and practicality. So for those reasons, I do feel that it is fair to give this Tiguan a four out of 10 in terms of value. Uh, it's a little bit more expensive, which is why it gets a lower score, but it's still a good value depending on how you spec it. So with that, let's get into the CX-5. 
Hey guys, we are behind the wheel of the Mazda CX-5 once again. I wanna to talk to you guys about the prevalent things that people care about in this segment, starting with exterior styling. Now, let me just say right here, there are a few categories where the CX-5 is going to destroy the rest of the segment. Now, Mazda's Kodo design language this, that they've been employing since about 2014 uh, continues to produce some of the best looking vehicles within the segment. Um, <clears throat> and I really think it's a much more mature design than you would get out of a CR-V or a Nissan Rogue or anything like that. But it's also much more elegant and exciting to look at than say a Toyota RAV4. Now, um, the reason being that I think this car is such a good looking car is because you get things like dual exhaust tips, 19 inch alloy wheels, uh, and a big menacing grille up front. This car is definitely the looker of the segment. So for exterior styling, I'm going to give the CX-5 an eight out of 10. Now let's talk about interior design. Remember when I said there are some categories that the Mazda will just leave the rest of the pack in the dust? Well, here we are again. Uh, the interior of the car, uh, especially on a GT trim finished in parchment. It's really, it's, the, it's Mazda's white leather, essentially. Um, it's really just the most premium and elegant feeling interior within the segment. Um, the design is clean and ergonomic while also being, you know, exceedingly beautiful to look at objectively. I mean, we've got excellent leather stitching or leather and stitching on the dash, uh, nice aluminum accents as well. I would like wood if I'm being you know, devil's advocate, but it really is for the segment an extremely, extremely beautiful cabin. Um, my only gripe, aside from, you know, maybe having wood here or there, is having a bigger sunroof. You get a panoramic sunroof in the Tiguan, and I really think that would be fantastic in this car. So for interior design, I'm gonna give the CX-5 a nine. Now let's talk about interior storage. Now, there are some aspects of this car, like I said, that decimate the competition, but there are also some aspects that leave a bit to be desired. So. This is what I'm talking about with the uh, interior space and cargo space. So I'm 6'1". Um, I can sit in the back comfortably. However, I wouldn't want to sit in the back uh, for a long period of time. I tend to slouch. I'm just, Maybe I'm just lazy. But my knees would definitely go into the back of the front seat, and that would definitely irritate the driver and passenger. So um, a little bit more legroom in the back seat would be nice, although headroom is just fine. Um, but one thing to mention also is that the trunk with both or with the rear seats folded down gives you about 60 cubic feet of cargo space. Now, that is on the lower end of the segment. The Tiguan is going to give you about 75 and a half. So there is quite a bit more space. The trunk itself I think is fine, but once you fold the seats down, that's really where the Tiguan's gonna pull away. So for interior space, I'll give this car reluctantly a three. Let's talk about interior build materials and quality. Uh, the quality, what I mean by quality is really just, um, you know, the materials used within the car, uh, the reliability, just, you know, how well this car is built. So this is the, an aspect of the car that I would consider more aggressively average. The interior materials are exceptional in terms of the leather and the soft touch dash and, you know, all the stitching everywhere. It's very nice uh, and premium. However, when you close, when you do things like close the door, you're not going to get that solid thunk that you would in a German vehicle. However, if we're talking about German vehicles, and we're going to bring up the Tiguan. Um, the Tiguan is 4,000 pounds. This is so much lighter, and you can really tell when you close the door. Now, being so much lighter, obviously, that is going to lend to more fuel economy, which we can all get behind. So overall, I'm gonna give the CX-5 a six for quality because I think it's much better than something like a Mitsubishi or a Nissan, um, but I don't think it's necessarily German level. So I would put it right on par with a Toyota RAV4 and a Honda CR-V. So great, great interior, great quality, um, just not the heavy, you know, kind of solid thunking of the door and the built materials that you would expect from a German vehicle. Now we have to talk about technology, and this is one of the aspects that I believe needs some work on the Mazdas. They're doing some work on it, they're getting better, but there are still some things that I would love to see within this car. Uh, the infotainment system, while it's nice enough, it is getting a bit old. Uh, the infotainment that is equipped in this car kind of came out around 2013-14, uh, and it's getting a little aged. The biggest thing that I think it lacks are things like Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. That needs to be standard. It's standard on pretty much everything uh, else in the segment, so that's one thing that I think Mazda falls short on. Additionally, their safety suite, while it is nice, you do get things like adaptive cruise with full stop, you do get lane departure warning, uh, you do get you know all that sort of fun stuff, 
but it's not as robust a safety suite as you would find on the Tiguan. And that is why I think, you know, some of the technology needs to be updated. Uh, a little more robust would be nice. This is the top trim on, on the Mazda CX-5, so I would love to see, um, you know, more forward collision mitigation, you know, all that sort of stuff. However, Mazda is working on it. Steps are being taken. Um, they're adding the power tailgate as well as heated rear seats, which I think are fantastic. So maybe the Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, which are really my only gripes about the technology, um, <clears throat> will come in a mid-cycle refresh. We can only hope. Let's talk about driving dynamics a little bit. Uh, the CX-5 is equipped with the same 2.5 liter naturally aspirated uh, four-cylinder that we've come to know and love. Um, however, it's not overly powerful. You've got about three more horsepower than previous generations, um, but what it lacks in power, it makes up for in handling and in turns and bends and things like that. This car drives much, or this CX-5, I should say, drives much more like a car than a tall SUV truck kind of thing. So I really believe that that is lending to um, a more sporty and dynamic feel. There is a sport mode which uh, adjusts your gearing to keep you higher in the rev range. So if you need to get on the power and you need to accelerate fast, you're able to do so because you're higher in the torque curve, uh, which I think is fantastic. Um, and I do like that Mazda leaves the sport mode as a, as a hard button right next to the gear selector. So it kind of tells me that Mazda really wants you to use it. They want you to drive it. They want you to have fun. They want you to experience the car. So I really like that they do that for you. Now, the new Mazda 6 gets a turbocharged engine. So if I'm really complaining, I would love to see the turbocharged engine make it into this car, and I would love to see how that works out. So for overall, I will give the dynamics and the driving uh, pleasure of the CX-5 a 7 out of 10, because I do believe it is more, one of the more fun um, examples within the segment. Now, the last thing that I will go into is value, uh, and this can be taken many different ways depending on what's important to you, um, but I personally believe that a decked out CX-5 is a fantastic value. Uh, you get things such as, you know, heated steering wheel, uh, rear heated seats, adaptive cruise, full stop, lane keep assist, uh, you know, the most luxurious, really, cabin within the segment, um, in my opinion, and, you know, a show-stopping exterior. You can get all of that for under 30 grand. You can get all of that for 29650 $45, I believe. Um, <clears throat> so just so you're aware, that is the same money that will get you into a Honda CRV EX trim. So for those of you that are not familiar with Honda trims, it goes LX, EX, EXL, Touring. So you're paying the same money to get into the top trim Mazda as you are to get the second from the base of the Honda. Plus the Honda doesn't give you leather seats and it definitely doesn't give you white leather seats. Also, a CX-5 is about $6,500 cheaper than an SEL Tiguan. Um, so you'll get a smaller car with a little bit less tech, but you're gonna get the best looking, most luxurious, and most fun to drive little SUV in the segment. So there you have it, guys. That is the Volkswagen Tiguan and the Mazda CX-5. The Mazda CX-5 came in with 45 out of 70 points, while the Volkswagen Tiguan came in at about 42, uh, making the sportier and better looking Mazda CX-5 the winner of this comparison. Now, if you're concerned thinking that, you know, 45, 42 points out of 70 isn't that good, rest assured that it is very objective. Uh, a lot of cars in this segment would score about equal or lesser than both of these guys. So they are fantastic choices, both of them, for any small SUV shopper uh, looking for a car such as these. Also keep in mind that these are just numbers and categories. At the end of the day, you have to make the decision that best suits your lifestyle. If you need more space and practicality, uh, this is gonna be a better buy for you. If you're really into more exterior aesthetics, the way it looks, the way it drives, making you feel a little bit more dangerous, go with one of these. But anyway, I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. As always, please leave a comment, subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks.